because um, that's also an important part of, of what I've been up to these past uh, 14 years, I guess it is, um, is just trying to carry my friend's songs around. Because I, I reckon I've had the opportunity to meet some of the best songwriters alive through doing this for a living. And uh, most of them are people that I met around campfires that hardly anybody's ever heard of. So, uh, unless you hang out in places like this, of course. I figure if the, uh, if the uh, commercial radio and the, and the TV is not going to carry those kind of songs around, it's on us singers to do it manually. So, uh, I'll play you one that I drop off just about everywhere I go. I know Dan's heard it before. Because I drop it off everywhere I go. But I don't think I've dropped it off in Ann Arbor yet. And uh, it comes from Barrie, Ontario. It's uh, written by a, a great songwriter named Trevor Mills, who uh, kind of retired a few years back, retired from the, from the folk singing business. He reckons you can make more money in IT. <laughs> I don't know. He's crazy. That's what he thinks. <laughs> Earth was shipped in a cellophane wrapper to a godlike kid by galactic courier. He placed an order from the back of a comic book he'd read when he should have been in school. He had a project due in his socio anthro eco geo bio and creationism course that he should have been working on instead of playing games with his gang of omnipotent pals. The project was due in a hundred thousand years, which can hardly be construed as enough time to populate a planet with intelligent beings who can live in a self-sustaining way. But he saw in the comic book an ad for a planet with a species on the brink of developing intelligence that could be shipped in a cellophane wrapper, and he thought, it's my ticket to an A. seem to you like a hundred thousand years is a long time but if you just consider that the kid with the comic book would see a hundred thousand years pass like the twinkle of a star so the kid put the earth on his desk in his bedroom underneath a heat lamp that he kept on a timer on his walls he had made constellations using stickers that were stars that could glow in the dark as the species on the brink of intelligence grew, found fire, built bombs, and exploded them, he cried when he learned the killing was so often interspersed with the praising of his name. So the kid with the comic book turned on the heat lamp, took a magnifying glass from his leftmost cupboard, and he looked to the earth, picked a symbolic bush, and focused and set it on fire. And when the bush was burning, the people got the message and the leaders agreed to take responsibility and base their actions on accountability and promise that they try to get along. So the kid took the earth to his teacher who looked and saw good work and the room for improvement, not a bad first try. B plus and excitement for your many more creations still to come. Now the earth lies wrapped in bubble wrap there on the floor of the closet of the kid with the comic book his mother checks in every now and then to ensure that things will work out in the end and so everything will work out.